You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, so you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Glory Hounds. So, I think this will be the final episode of Glory Hounds for now. Um, so I think someone told me to go the full 20 minutes in order to see the end of this, so that's what I plan on doing. But anyway, guys, please sit back and let me detain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Where were we? Sit inside, holding the door open for me. Alright. Hurry, there is a storm. Hurry, there is a storm coming. You don't gotta tell me twice. Right. <laughs> don't want your place to smell like wet dog. Do not worry. I am used to it. I sidled past him. He smells like citrus and pepper. I don't know if it's cologne or something he's been cooking. Definitely not a bad scent. Uh oh. The foyer's richly decorated. Beautiful. The foyer's richly decorated, beautiful red walls lined with dark wooden doors and bookcases that are all completely stacked, like a library from a fantasy book. My eyes are drawn to an impressive bust of a canine sitting in an alcove on the far wall. Unlike the statues outside, this one seems to have retained its original bronze color. But just like the statues outside, it stares right at me, its eyes following me no matter which direction I look at it from. I will fetch Master. Please wait here, and do not touch anything under any circumstances. I will be back shortly. Yes, sir. As he turns away, I can't help but notice his very defined features. He carries himself with elegance, especially for such a large man. He lives through one of the doors, his footsteps echo around the large room. Instantly, I feel compelled to explore. I know he literally just told me not to touch anything, but I've never been in a rich people house before, and there's just so much to see. I'm pretty sure I could spend a year in this place and not get bored. I scan the shelves, looking for anything that catches my eye. Are these comic books? They should look like comic books. This one has the entire Stinger collection. Would they notice if I snuck an issue home with me? Focus, Alex. Don't touch anything. Hmm. A minute passes, then another. That ticking clock's starting to get on my nerves. I try some of the doors, but they're all locked. Even the one the butler went through. Aw, I was kind of looking forward to snooping. My eyes fall on the bust again, still staring at me with those empty bronze eyes, almost begging for me to investigate. Walking up to it, I catch a familiar scent. Ginger and lime, just like the Dawn Hound last night. While the rest of the ample bust is practically sparkling, there's a noticeable smudged handprint right on the top of its head. I tilt my head. It's bothering me. I roll my sleeve over my hand and place it on the dog's head. Before I can get before I can get to scrubbing, I hear a loud click. The bust gives way under my paw, head sinking a bit like I just pressed a button. I'm about to step back when all of a sudden... Ah! The floor drops under me. I try to stop myself, but I've built up too much momentum. The chute-like structure evens out until it's evens out into a slide, and I'm hurriedly down at maximum velocity. I keep screaming, but after a while, there's no air left in my lungs. These have been the worst 24 hours of my entire life. By the time I hit the soft surface at the bottom, I'm all but traumatized. I still shut tight. Ha! <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, who is this talking? Wow, three minutes and 34 seconds. The voice is distant, but there's no mistaking it. Oh, it let's see. Wow, three minutes and 34 seconds. The voice is distant. There's no mistaking it. That's the Dawn Hound. I believe you owe me 20 euros, sir. And the butler, too. What? I push myself up, but my arms are still shaking, and I just end up collapsing on the padded leathery floor again. I can't believe what I see when I open my eyes. No! Oh. Hello there. It's like a set of a sci-fi flick in here. Screen showing security footage and city streets, machines, buttons, flashing lights, and levers everywhere. The air's so stuffy in here, it's almost hard to breathe. The butler's manning a large computer at the far end of the room. There's what appears to be a ventilation system along the ceiling and a thick metal pipe leading down to the floor. Is this part of the mansion, too? Just how far below ground are we? Just what was that slide? Oh, hello there, handsome. Need a hand spot? I'm so distracted I don't notice the fuzzy brown hand reaching out to me. I look up at its owner. Come to think of it, I feel dumb for not recognizing him at the office earlier. I scramble to my feet, just glad I'm still in one piece after that. Sore, sore all over, though. You probably have a lot of questions. A few thousand, at least. Um, yeah, a couple. What the hell is going on here? And I'd be more than happy to, I'd be more than happy to answer them. At least someone's tail is wagging. Okay, who are you? Why, I'm known as Don, huh? I mean, who are you, really? Right, I suppose I haven't properly introduced myself yet. 
The butler swivels his swanky chair around. I advise you not to indulge in any unnecessary information, sir. Christ's sake, Milo, he deserves to know. The name is Rule. Rule Brevard, CEO of Brevard Enterprises. Sparkling ray of sunshine over there is my butler. Milo Drostov. Right. Brev... Brev... Did, did you say Raul Brevard? The... Brevard? Think of the future, think of Brevard? My, my boss? That's you? In the flesh. This is a joke, right? Where are the cameras? My eyes dart between the dog and the bird, waiting for them to laugh and admit it, but they don't. My eyes are darting all over the room, scanning for hidden camera crews. All right, you can all come out now. I feel like a clown. This was a mistake. There's a lot to take in, I know, but it's all true. But, 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 but no one's ever seen Brevard in person. Precisely. What better cover identity for a mass vigilante? No one would suspect a reclusive millionaire with zero media presence. In comic books, I'd say that's usually the first person to suspect, but now that I'm actually seeing it in real life, I'm utterly floored. You're serious, aren't you? I just told you, I'm Raul. <laughs> What's he doing? Is he bouncing up and down? What? He laughs and notices I'm not joining him and stops. Behind him, the butler Milo rubs his beak with a groan. <clears throat> yes, uh, quite serious. Tough crowd. Does this guy think he's a comedian or something? I can't take this anymore. This isn't funny. I traveled halfway across the city to some huge mansion that can't decide if it's fancy or dilapidated. Then I tumbled down a magic slide into an overgrown basement with security screens everywhere that apparently belongs to one of the richest people in the city. My former employer, who apparently fancies himself a pro wrestler crime fighter at night and sends me on, to, and sends me on a breadcrumb trail to the secret lair of his. My gestures are as wild as my mind is. And you're acting like you've, we've just had a casual job interview at the office. What the hell is all this? I've had the worst day of my life and... Before I can continue my incoherent blathering, the Wattweiler puts his paw firmly on my shoulder. He's strong. The look on his face is serious now. Alex, please calm down. There's kindness and concern in his eyes. I'm sorry, this is probably a lot to take in. I, have, I, hadn't, had, I hadn't quite considered that this must all be very unusual for you. That's an understatement if I've ever heard one. I nod, I nod. His face softens back into a smile, though not as goofy as before. But there is a reason for everything, I promise. Just hear me out. I feel like I'm about to cry. I take a deep breath. All right, Mr. Brevard. No need for formalities. Raoul. What is this place? Why am I here? We are currently at secret location, about 50 meters underground. Every hero needs a lair. As for the why, you're here because I want to make you an offer. What kind of offer? Do you remember that what happened last night at the store? He nods. How could I not? What if I told you that that was only one of the many recent incidents? He paces towards the raw row of screens, hands on his back. It's not just the Saltwater Syndicate at work. They're part of a bigger picture. A civilian such as yourself might not notice it. There are cracks starting to form in our beautiful city. I mean, it's a big, it's a big city with almost a million people. You think crime is just you think you think crime is just part of the deal? Isn't that what the police are for? Why fight crime yourself? He turns his head towards me. The glare from the screens hits his glasses, and I can't see his eyes behind them. Mrs. De Bruin is only one of hundreds of innocents targeted this past year alone. Someone needs to take a stand. Protect the folks the police can't, or won't. Alex De Rouge, last night you showed exemplary courage. Recklessness. Regardless, you saved the life of an innocent woman as well as my own. I'd like to invite you to join my cause. My cause is my assistant. My sidekick, if you will. My jaw has officially hit the floor. Uh, when I try to force words out, all I can do is stammer and stutter. You're free to refuse, of course, and pretend this never happened. Milo will take you home. I'll see what I can do to smooth things over with your supervisor, and you can continue living your everyday life. But is that what you want? Or would you rather be part of something bigger? He turns back to me, a hand extended. I look down at it, then back up at it again. He's got the same goofy grin on his face as he did last night. Something bigger. I've been stuck so long that just hearing those two words feels like reaching the light at the end of a long tunnel. Then I think back to how it felt helping Mrs. De Bruin last night. How terrified I was. How I almost died multiple times. I can't see myself living in fear like that and coming out with a grin that big. Why did I come here in the first place? I bat his hand away. His face falls. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I can't accept this. Why not? I'm not... I'm not cut out for it like you are. 
I don't think I've ever been as terrified as I was last night. Believe me, I wouldn't be offering you this job if I didn't think you were the right man for it. Well, I I'm not- I'm not the right man, okay? I'm- I sigh. I'm just a fuck-up who dropped out of college because things got too difficult. I'm sure you can do better than that for a sidekick. That's not true. You said I could refuse. I, I refuse. This is all just getting to be too much for me. I look past him at the crow who's gone back to typing on his computer. Hey, I can tell you where the exit is. Hey, can you tell me where the exit is? There is elevator to your right. Okay, thanks. At least let him drive you home. I, I walked over here. I can walk back. Just need to clear my head. I dust myself off and brush him aside, tipping my head as Milo to Milo as I hit what I assume to be the elevator button. A door opens. It's a pretty small elevator for a place this big. I guess it's only built for two people at a time. There's only one button. Up. Good. I'm sorry I couldn't help you. I step inside. Spot! Oh. The doors close. Hmm. I pull on the drawstrings of my hoodie. It's gotten way too cold for comfort. What time is it even? Not that it matters. I don't have anywhere to go without a job anyway. And so I just walk. Before long, I've left the mansion behind me like a bad dream. As populated as the city streets were this morning, they're completely abandoned now. Not surprising, the rain's coming down hard. That butler wasn't lying about the storm. The sky's almost black, and I'm soaked to the bone. And none of that matters. But none of that matters. Me, sidekick. It sounds so amazing on the surface, doesn't it? <laughs> to be your hero, some people look up for look up to for, look up to you for protection, a beacon of hope. And that's just how it is in the comics. It's so different in real life. I could have died in Mrs. DeBruin's shop. More importantly, she could have died if I'd fucked up in there. And this masked vigilante thinks I'm cut out for this business just because I didn't chicken out? Today showed I can't even keep a job. How does he expect me to keep other people alive? Hmm. Even at my job, my former job, I was too timid to see the day. Just doing what I was told to do, trying to keep a low enough profile to get in trouble with, to not get in trouble with my permanently scowling supervisor. I always did a decent job of that, and that had always been good enough for me. The one time I was in line for something resembling a promotion, I just balked because I didn't know if I could handle the responsibility. Lou and Willem tried to desperately, tried to, so desperately to get me to reconsider. And I've always wondered if I might have had a more successful career if I'd taken that chance. The difference is that if I mess up in repairs, no one dies. Thankfully, even my supervisor looks, even my supervisor's looks can't kill anything other than my self-esteem. Fighting criminals and saving people, though? It's not just my life on the line. What if I mess up badly enough? What if I best mess up badly enough? What I need is some time to figure things out. I'll find an opportunity again eventually. I head into the nearest store to get some much-needed comfort food. Uh, mostly just ice cream. A couple days of chilling on the couch with Max will do me some good. Hero's life is probably overrated anyway. But what if this is my one chance to add a better life? What if I really could be more? Something good finally falls into my lap, and I turn tail? This is exactly why I've had the same shit job since high school. It's not like I'd be thrown into the deep end as a sidekick. I'd be learning the ropes from the pro and getting paid for it. At least I I hope he was gonna pay me. I wanna take I wanna take Dawn I wanted to take Dawn Hound. I mean roll upon his offer, I really did, but I was so confused and scared and hopeless like always. Everyone around me thinks I'm capable of more. Lou, Willie, even Raul. Am I the only one who can't see it? Do I have an enemy to take that big of a leap of faith? My mind continues to wander, wondering if I made the wrong call. Wondering if I'll ever if I'll ever have a chance like this again. If I'll ever even have a job again. If anyone would even care. Fuck! I say it loudly, almost shouting it into the void. The only thing that scares me more than jumping into the deep end is being left alone at the edge of the cliff after everyone's already gone in. And deep down, I know I'll regret it for the rest of my life if I don't do this. I guess that settles it. Do it. Hmm. I'm going back. I just hope it's not too late. Hmm. The mansion looks even creepier than before with these dark clouds hovering up above. Lightning cracks in the distance as I open the rusty old gate. It gets stuck in the mud, leaving only a tiny space for me to slip through. The statues along the path seem to actually, honest to God, turn their heads as I walk by. At this point, I'm pretty sure they've got cameras installed in them. Or maybe I'm on the brink of a major meltdown. 
I, I hurried to the front door, slipping and sliding over the wet cobblestone. Uh, hello? Ooh, nice art. I bang on the door. It's me, Alex! Open up! No answer. Please! I step back from the door. I'm so exhausted my tongue's rolling out of my muzzle. Please, just give me one more chance! Uh. I hear a laugh coming from behind the door, and then it finally opens. After being outside in the dark for so long, the bright light coming from inside practically blinds me. Oh man, I love it. Milo stands in the doorway. He regards me with what looks like a scowl? I can't really tell emotions when it comes to beaks. Hm. Forty minutes and thirty-six seconds. His expression softens and he steps aside, holding the door open. Less than an hour. I believe you owe me another twenty euros, sir. Hm. Ral comes into view with folded arms and the toothiest of smiles. I can't help but smile back at them. A small price to pay. Welcome home, Spot. Or should I call you Duskhound? Dusk Hound? Come up with it, came up with it while you were gone. He was very proud of it. Didn't hear any ideas from you, smartass. Only because it is difficult to match creative genius such as yourself, Master Bravard. Sounds good to me. Really? Really? I mean, it is only the opposite of Dawn. There are other options to consider. Yeah, Dusk Hound it is. Well, Dusk Hound, fancy a cup of coffee? Milo just put some on. I like that a lot. I, uh, brought ice cream. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so good. Oh, I love it. The art is so fucking good. Ah, issue number one is over. Okay, so we got to wait for the next update. That's fine. Oh, man, that was wonderful. Here, let's go back and save it right here. There we go. Okay, alrighty. righty. loo Oh, I love it. This is amazing! I love this game! Oh, I can't wait for more! No, a word from our sponsors. Oh, man, you guys have come a long way since Echo. Man. Ooh, is there an after thing? Oh, I thought there'd be like an after thing, like in superhero movies. Like a little teaser or something. Alright, guys, we've reached the current end of Glory Hounds. I am very excited to see where this goes. I cannot wait! But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!